All right, Moido. Let's make a start on this one. Um, today we're going to look at a very short uh, topic, and that is looking at where functions meet. So if you have a pair of functions on a graph, how do you calculate where they intersect each other? Um, we'll do this two ways. We'll do it with a calculator, and clearly because you don't have a calculator there in the SAT, we'll do it by hand. Um, it's worth noting that if there are two graphs in a Cartesian plane, three things can happen. Either they can cut two points of intersection, they can touch one point of intersection, or they can miss entirely no points of intersection. And this should maybe jog your memory from the number of axis intercepts. We have the same options for a quadratic touching an axis. axis, And the discriminant helped us there determining which option would happen. Similarly here, discriminant will play a part. But to start with, we're going to look at a pair of graphs. So we're going to look at the graphs x squared, take 5x, take 6, and y equals minus 5x, take 3. And to start with, we're going to do it the easy way, which is use our calculator. So can you guys grab your calculator out if you have one? I'll open mine up. You're allowed it now, but not with that. So, in your calculator, let me just my view. All right, we want to go graph mode, so hit five, delete whatever's there. And then we're going to enter our two graphs. They're on the sheet in front of you. They're also here. It's x squared, take 5x, take 6. So x squared, take 5x, take 6. And the other graph is minus 5x, minus 3. If your view window is set from something weird from before, I would just change it to standard. And then you should have something that looks like this. If you can't quite see both the intersections, an easy way to fix this is just hit zoom and out, and you go out a tiny bit. And then you should have a graph that looks something like what's on the board. Now, we can see that the line is intersecting at two places. So our calculator can hunt this down pretty easily for us. If you hit G-solve, intersect. So F5 and then F5 again. It will give you one answer as minus 1.73 and the other answer as positive 1.73. Now, this shows a weakness of the calculator, I guess. This is not a very pretty answer. Does anyone happen to know what that is as a proper number? Oh. When you grow in nerddom in a few years' time, you know how decimals start looking familiar? If you look at 3.14, you can all say it's probably pi. Is that the square root of 2? Close. Yeah. Square root of 2 is 1.41. That's root 3. So what we're probably looking at is a solution here at plus and minus root 3. Good guess for root 2. Yeah. <coughs> um, so the calculator can give you decimals, but it doesn't give you exact. So, interesting to know how to do it on the calculator, but clearly we want to know how to do it exactly algebraically as well. Alright, the logic behind it algebraically is where they meet, if you have two points, like an xy point and an xy point, the x's will be the same and the y's will be the same. So where they meet, this y will equal that y. If those y's are equal, it means what's on the other side of each equal sign is equal as well. So if we want to find where a pair of lines meet, we set the equations equal to each other, because what we're really doing is saying, okay, the y's are going to be the same, therefore where they meet, x squared take 5x take 6 will equal minus 5x minus 3. And that's the first line of your working algebraically, is you're setting these lines equal to each other. And what you're really thinking in your head is, I'm going to make y equal the other y. Because if y is equal to that and y is equal to that, then these two must be the same. From here, we solve it like any quadratic equation. Our goal is to get everything on one side and zero on the other. So I would start by adding 5x and adding 3. <clears throat> and what we've got then is x squared minus 3 equals 0. 
and we sort of see where the calculator is coming from now. We add 3 to both sides, so x squared equals 3, square root both sides, x equals plus or minus root 3. Which agrees with what lines up on the calculator, but this is the algebraic process to get the exact answer. Now note, that is just the x coordinates of the intersection. If we want to find where they intersect as coordinates, we're really looking for root 3 comma something and minus root 3 comma something. Any ideas how we fill in those somethings? Like what's the y coordinate for those x coordinates? Yeah, let, let x be root 3. And I would probably put it, is that what people said? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go. <laughs> you can either let the x be root 3 in this one or this one. I'd probably go this one easier. If we let x be root 3 here, there's not a lot we can do to simplify it. It's going to be minus 5 root 3 take 3. It's not pretty, but there's no way we can put those numbers in a nicer way together. That's in simplest form already. If we put in minus root 3 to here, minus root 3 to here will end up being positive 5 root 3 take 3. Now, if you wanted to check this was right, what you would do is you would go to your calculator and see how this is minus 11.66 when the root 3 is positive. What you would do is you would put the positive root 3 into here, which is what we've done, and you check that that is in fact equal to minus 11.66. But we should be pretty confident that it will be. So our pair of solutions for where those lines meet is those two points on the board here. And it doesn't have to be beautifully easy or nice round numbers. Often they'll write the question to be round numbers, but we should be aware that you can get nasty ones. The second type of question they're likely to ask you is this one. Find the value for A for which there are two meeting points. And what they've got here is a pair of quadratics. And just to help you visualize it, here's something I prepared earlier. These are the quadratics on decimals. The red one is fixed. That's the top one. That equation doesn't change at all, so it stays there. The blue one, however, has this A hanging on the end, and the A changes. So right now, when the A is 1.8, we can see there are no solutions. If I make the A 4, for example, there are still no solutions. But there's going to be some value of A for which the start being two solutions. There might even be a magic value of A where there is only one solution and it touches perfectly. And what we're hunting is, how, what is that value of A for which there is one solution and what are the range of values of A for which there are going to be two solutions? Can you guys sort of see that visually? So, seeing it visually is one thing, but you don't sort of have decimals in the sack, so we have to be able to do it algebraically as well. Find the values of A for which there are two meeting points. The plan here is to set these equal to each other, generate a quadratic, and then find where the discriminant is positive. If the discriminant is positive, there will be two meeting points. So, our setup here is set the equations equal to each other, minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals x squared take 3x plus a. Then we want the 0 on one side and all the other numbers on the other. Now, I would, I like having a leading coefficient that's positive, meaning I like the number in front of x squared to be positive. So I'm going to make a slightly odd choice to take everything from this side and throw it over there. So I'm going to add 2x squared minus 3x and 4. And you don't have to write these working lines in. I mean, it's good for your notes so you can see what you're doing, but you wouldn't have to in a test. You can just do it in your head. And therefore, what we have on this side is 0, because I've eliminated everything. Over here is 
3x squared take 6x plus a plus 4. It's a quadratic with a hanging out there. If we want two solutions, we want the discriminant to be greater than 0. Therefore, we want b squared take 4ac to be greater than 0. Before I go on, it's probably worth highlighting what our a, b, and c are. This is our a. This is the b, which is minus 6. c is this whole thing here. Both of those are constants. So a and c are both constants here. Sorry, a and 4 are both constants. They form part of the c. So when we are <clears throat> substituting into the discriminant, we've got to remember a, b, and c is sometimes more than just one thing. All right. B squared, so that is minus 6 squared, minus 4 bracket, 3 bracket, bracket, A plus 4 is greater than 0. And then we solve. So to solve, I mean we're aiming to get A by itself. So I would expand this out, minus 6 squared is 36. This is really minus 12, and that minus 12 goes into there and there. So minus 12a, minus 12 times 4, minus 48, is greater than 0. Thirty-six minus 48 is minus 12. Are you happy if I add 12 and put it to the other side? So minus 12a is greater than positive 12. That's the effect of combining the 36, the minus 48, and then throwing it to the other side of the equation. Now here comes the trap with inequalities. If I divide by a negative, I must flip the sign. So therefore, a sign flipped, negative 1. Because 12 divided by negative 12 is negative 1. So the discriminant is positive when a is less than negative 1. And that's what we saw on the graph, is that if I dragged a down below minus 1, there were two distinct intersection points. If a goes above minus 1, then there are no points. a at minus 1, there is one point. But for everything where a is under minus 1, there were two points. So it's neat. You can tell quite a lot about a graph with intersection points algebraically using the discriminant. And that should give you enough to, after you finish the graphing ones, or if you want to, you can jump straight there, look at where functions meet. There's eight questions, they're not too long. It's just finding where functions meet. Right, any questions?